Hello, my name is uh, Roshan Shamsundar and we are from Northwestern University here today to present FMHOP at DFHS 2020. So what is uh, FMHOP really? FMHOP is a system that automatically tunes in-car radio stations based on user preferences. The main aim for FMHOP is to reduce user distractions caused due to fiddling with car radio stations and eventually leading to reduction in car related accidents caused due to this as well. So is it relevant? Is fiddling with car controls uh, really that big of a deal? It turns out that it certainly is. We have numerous reports that show distracted driving account for 58% of car accidents uh, and a large number of fatalities and crashes are due to distracted driving. Um, so we could see why automatically adjusting radio stations on a driver's behalf can really help. And that is precisely what FMHOP uh, intends to do. So how does FMHOP work? To accomplish uh, automatic switching uh, to content that a user likes, FMHOP must know two things at minimum. The first being what content the driver likes to um, listen to that so that we can make uh, decisions later about staying tuned or uh, turning away for better options. Further, we also need to know which option to turn away to when it comes down to choosing another station. And this can be achieved only if we know what is simultaneously playing on other stations. The first step is achieved, uh, like we will explain soon, by keeping track of driver's content preferences and learning over time. The second step is a little more indirect, and we'll see why. So uh, first of all, FM um, Hop uses RDS. FM receivers uh, um, usually are able to receive uh, RDS signals. Uh, RDS is a, a protocol that allows broadcast FM radio to be accompanied by digital signals. The purpose of this protocol is to enhance uh, FM radio uh, functionality. Uh, in particular, we, we want to use uh, the uh, RT information field because this is a 64-character uh, freeform text field that shows station identifying information or text corresponding to the radio program being uh, broadcast. While FM receivers receive RDS signals from the channels they are tuned into, it makes it difficult for a single chip to simultaneously know uh, content that's playing elsewhere because an FM tuner can only receive signals from one channel at a time. To bridge this, the key idea is to use um, FM receivers in smartphones to scan available FM stations, analyze their RDS, build a map of stations that could potentially be available for FM hub clients to use, and then tune the car's FM uh, receiver. Typically, many smartphones are manufactured today with an FM chip and are ubiquitous in vehicular environments and can be used. So now we look at the design of the FM hub system. This figure shows uh, the dual FM receiver system with one FM chipset on the head unit and the other one on the user smartphone. Uh, the vehicular head unit uh, is where uh, the FM hop client runs uh, and the user smartphone is where the FM hop server runs. So FM hop is uh, implemented in a client server architecture and the client and the server are then connected via Bluetooth. Uh, we, as, as mentioned before, server um, the server scans RDS signals by cycling through uh, frequencies and collects this RDS data and, and analyzing them. But in addition to that, it also assesses the likelihood that a user prefers certain content. Uh, so we will see how this happens in a short while. Uh, and as the server subsequently does this, the client requests the server for any available stations that necessarily have better content. And if the response is in fact for a better station, then it makes a switch. Uh, FM hop does not require uh, direct user interaction, but users are still capable of overriding FM hop's decisions. We keep uh, track of this so that um, we can later use it to understand the preferences of users um, based on uh, how much of, a, of a, a, a certain music track they listen to. So initially, um, to assess the likelihood of uh, the favorable content, FM hop has to assign weights to different uh, radio texts because we, when we receive radio texts, we uh, can correspond these radio texts to music tracks and the weight that is given uh, to them corresponds to the preference uh, of a user. Uh, at Bootstrap, we ask the user to explicitly mention their genre preferences and using these preferences, we make uh, a group, uh, a grouping of uh, weights to these radio texts. Uh, the, the three cases by which we do this is when we receive music tracks belonging to a genre preferred by the user, we give it the uh, highest weight. Uh, then when we receive a, a music track that belongs to a genre not preferred by the user, we give it a slightly lower uh, weight. And finally, um, the uh, 
non-music content such as announcements, bits, and advertisements, they're all given the, the lowest weight possible. Uh, so the weights are then used to cluster these radio texts in, into groups using k-means uh, and then uh, creating a, a, a cluster of uh, three groups. And uh, these three groups can be intuitively perceived as the preferred group the weakly unpreferred group, and then the strongly unpreferred group. A uh, binary decision would not be too rich uh, to make these uh, preferential switches between genres. And um, uh, and, and if, if uh, the number of groups were uh, too large, then as we will see later, the switching mechanism will switch way too frequently. So the initial weights assigned to radio text only capture a broad sense of the user's preference. However, uh, if we uh, we want to effectively switch and incorporate user preference on an ongoing basis, we need to dynamically adjust these uh, weights for radio texts. So we use the amount of time that the user spends listening to any content before switching as a major indicator in dynamically adjusting these weights. So for a given uh, duration D uh, that a user spends listening to a certain track and uh, we have the length of a, 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 a track T, uh, we, we, we basically uh, adjust the weights uh, using this uh, weight, weight equation um, and the intuition for adjusting weights in this manner is that while we reward uh, a radio text uh, if a large portion of the corresponding content is listened to we also penalize uh, the radio text that the user immediately switches away from to express uh, dislike for it. Now we see how um, the music content is uh, identified by FM Hop. Uh, we know that RT is advertising, uh, advertised programming information such as the station identifiers, music track information, and artist information. But we don't have other content-based metadata such as genre or uh, track length, which we leverage for understanding user preference. So, uh, for this purpose, we rely on online resources, including like the Spotify, Billboard, and Last FM APIs, to build and update uh, a knowledge base that is stored. Uh, locally on uh, uh, the FM Hop server. So we, we also um, then map the received radio text to an audio track in the knowledge base and perform uh, matching and lookups to obtain uh, content-based uh, metadata. Uh, that, that's with music content, but let us also see what happens uh, uh, with non-music content. How do we identify non-music content? Um, Station identification information is actually something that is embedded in uh, the radio text as a station slogan, and that is what is broadcasted during host announcements, commercials, and natural breaks in programming. So um, the, 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 the slogan uh, is basically uh, is broadcast uh, multiple times uh, over the course uh, of an entire day, and we observed that even over a, a period of just 20 minutes, the station slogan is the most frequently broadcast. Uh, a radio station, so uh, uh, radio text. So, uh, in in order to identify if announcements or shoutouts uh, are are playing, then we only need to look for the, uh, the 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 radio text that corresponds to the slogan. So, FM Hop uh, also has a, a passive service that keeps uh, running in the background. Um, where on, on the server side, where it uh, tries to identify these uh, radio slogans by looking at the most frequently broadcast uh, radio text and uh, stores that information uh, locally as well. Now that FM Hub has the preference clusters and information of which radio text belong to which preferential group, we can go ahead and check to see if switching is needed on the client side. The head unit communicates with the smartphone via Bluetooth messages and is responsible for sending any received radio text to the smartphone for processing. Uh, additionally, the head unit periodically makes requests to the smartphone for information about any currently available uh, radio texts that have a greater weight than currently playing content on the head unit. Uh, the server then responds to the request at that point in time. The head unit then simply checks to see if the received uh, radio text uh, corresponding to the potentially better content in fact belongs to a cluster with a larger centroid magnitude and switches based on this. So FM Hub clients will uh, only switch to a uh, station playing a track uh, if the track belongs to a group with higher centroid magnitude. So to evaluate the FM Hub algorithm on a large user base, we chose to deploy it using a web-based framework uh, simulating FM Hub um, on the web browser client. Uh, 
uh, users were crowdsourced uh, from all over the US uh, to allow for great participant diversity using Amazon's uh, MTurk service. Um, we captured radio broadcasts from several radio stations in a large metropolitan area and then performed over 600 user simulations in which each simulation provided a user with cognitive tasks to complete um, and an interface by which the user could tune a virtual radio based on their preference. We divided users into two equal groups, a control group that did not receive the FM hop algorithm and uh, could manually change the audio stream and a test group that received the automatic switching of the FM hop algorithm. Uh, the cognitive test that we added uh, tried to simulate the task of uh, cognitive load while driving. Specifically, users were presented with a scrolling series of letters across their screens and they had to press this uh, corresponding key on their keyboards when the letter was within defined boundaries. Uh, we logged an error when a user failed to do this correctly and each group was further divided into three load complexity categories, low, medium and high, with uh, the amount of time allowed for each task shrinking as complexity increases. In order to ensure that they are also fully engaged with the, the simulation and not simply turn off their audio devices, we stated that the users may also receive audio instructions that they need to comply with in order to successfully complete the task. Uh, though no audio instructions were actually provided, we thought this would cause each user to ensure that they're receiving um, the simulation audio. Let's look at uh, some of the results from our evaluation. Uh, we start off here by um, looking at the manual number of switches for low, medium, and high complexity uh, situations. Um, we see that the medium number of switches during um, a simulation by FM hop users in the low complexity case was um, four by FM hop users and uh, 13 in uh, the case of uh, using standard radio. Um, our findings from these 15-minute uh, simulations are generally consistent with those of an independent study by Edison Research that finds that radio listeners change stations uh, about an average of 22 times during a 35-minute commute. In general, uh, FM hop users switched about 70% less frequently than standard radio users. Uh, this demonstrates that FM hop's switching algorithm was effective for all types of users from those that seldom switch to those that switch frequently. Uh, the second and third uh, figures show that the median number of switches uh, increases as a function of task complexity. Uh, this makes intuitive sense because users are allocating more of their cognitive uh, resources to the primary task at hand uh, instead of manipulating music sources. Um, we also see that uh, the variability in the number of uh, switches narrows between standard radio and FM uh, hop um, in both those cases. Uh, so. Uh, what this demonstrates that is in all cases we, we find that users experiencing uh, the FM hop switching algorithm demonstrate um, fewer number of switches than users experiencing standard radio across all complexities. Um, here we take a look at the distribution of the error rate for both FM hop and standard radio users um, again for three complexity levels. We see that the median error rate for the low complexity cognitive load is about 4.44% uh, for FM hop users and 6.11% uh, for uh, the control group, uh, while for the medium complexity, uh, the cognitive load is uh, me medium complexity cognitive load, it is 5.44% uh, for FM hop users and 6.61% for the control group. Um, finally, for the median error rate uh, for high complexity cognitive load, is about 16.22% for FM hop users uh, versus 20.22% for the control group. Naturally, the error rate increases for both FM hop users and the control group as complexity increases, but we also find that the error rate of uh, FM hop uh, users is strictly lower than the error rate for standard radio at all complexity levels. Uh, lastly, to measure the accuracy of FM hop switching algorithm, we look at the instances in which a switch made by FM hop was uh, overridden by the user. We define our accuracy measure with a given equation and we obtain a continuous measure that takes values between 0 and 1 with a higher value indicating a greater accuracy for FM hop. Um, we see that the accuracy measure is similar across the three complexity categories uh, we defined and since uh, accuracy is measured on a spectrum from 0% which is the same as not having FM hop to 100% uh, where the user like uh, like every switch FM hop made, a uh, realized accuracy measure represents a significant portion of the total possible improvement, uh, which is about um, half. 
Finally, to conclude, we uh, look at some, some of the key insights. We showed that the RDS digital signal in FM radio has sufficient indicators to automate FM tuning based on users' preferences. Uh, we see that uh, automatic switching reduced the number of user interactions with the device by about 70%. Uh, automatic switching resulted in a strictly lower driver error rate in all complexity scenarios. Our uh, realized accuracy measure represents a significant portion, which is about 50% of the total possible uh, improvement.